What's up, comic amigos, and welcome to a special edition of the Team Nerd Herd Podcast, where me and this guy take you on a little trip to Austin for some barbecue and some comics. But first off, let me tell you about the first place that we went to. You know what? Just get the hell out of my way. Come on. All right. What's up, guys? It's Eddie here from Team Nerd Herd, and I just want to tell you about how the whole experience that we went to Austin at the beginning of the year before all the nonsense went around with the world and whatnot but yeah regardless let's, let's talk about some barbecue and some comics all right so early january went down to austin with my uncles and we decided like you know what all right we're gonna have a plan we're gonna go here 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 right well we start off at a place called law barbecue so day going there just fresh off the plane we're like you know what? let's just go get some barbecue right off the bat all right so first up is law barbecue this place is open for about a few years now if i'm not mistaken um, first place you went to off the flight, and yeah, let's check it out. We out here, baby. Barbecue first, Funko Pops later. So, here at Law Barbecue, you can literally buy yourself some shampoo and you can buy yourself some barbecue. We need some wine over there, beer over there. Hell, they even got candy bars over there. No, oh, I want the shampoo and barbecue. Shampoo and barbecue is good. Thought about barbecue too much. What happened to your nose, dude? Thought about barbecue too much. Mm, man, that's good. All right, guys, what do you guys think? Uh, I thought the barbecue was pretty all right. Um, brisket was a little too spicy, kind of numbed out the flavor of it. Uh, it was chopped up, it wasn't regular brisket, so I'd probably give this a solid 7 out of 10. They ran a sliced bris uh, brisket, so it's not an accurate statement, but the uh, the pulled brisket that they had was a lot of different things, spices, uh, extra moisture and everything. Made me wonder about that. Mm -hmm. So, kind of something in there. Seven out of ten. Yeah, it was a good start. Good taco. <laughs> good, ta good taco. Good taco. Hey, taco. All right, guys. So the food aspect of it was so. Brisket, I wish that we were able to get the actual, you know, freshly cut brisket because I guess we showed up too late and we ended up getting this chopped brisket. Um, it didn't really, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. But the thing that really dampened it for me, the experience would have been that they used like a really weird, awkward pepper sauce, pepper rub, something on it. It really masked over the natural beef flavor of it. Though for what it was, it was pretty good. So that... Potato salad is really good there. Had it as well. But yeah, no. Uh, also, the sausage there was actually pretty good. Really meaty, really juicy. Had a really nice earthy tone to it. And yeah, it was pretty good. At the end of the day with Law Barbecue, we ended up being a little disappointed. So we packed up with the, our sad selves and we decided to drive down the road. Not even, I think, a quarter mile down the road, we ran into this place called Veracruz, which is a food truck out in Austin. All the all, what they're all about is about organic, organic, so organic taco shells, organic meat, organic eggs. Really cool, nice little food truck just stationed right in the middle of Main Street in Austin, Texas. You guys definitely need to check it out. So let's go ahead and check it out. So we just went to Law Barbecue, and a little disappointment. So we decided to go to Veracruz, a nice little place just down the road. We heard about it. Let's go check it out, baby. Hello. Can I get one uh, migas or anything on this, please? Do you want a flower or cortadilla? Corn, please. Okay. Yes. Uh, what's your most popular drink? Uh, drink? Yeah. We don't sell drinks. Just a bottle of water, uh, can of Coke, with Sprite, and some fresh ice. I'll just get a can of Coke. Okay. I got the Ladino. Mushrooms and all natural uh, carrots. Kind of. What'd you get, dude? Ago, like, the original is, is good, yeah. man. This might be like a daily thing for this day. It's good. Yeah, I want to try the green sauce. Go for it. Well, we got to get 
we'll just get about four of those to go. On the way out, yeah. Yeah, for the uh, for the taco, <laughs> late night tacos. Late night. Yeah. We gotta get some tortillas. Yeah. Oh my. Okay, so the really cool thing about here that these guys really emphasize on with their organics is that their breakfast tacos were out of this world, you guys. After the disappointment of what La Barbecue ended up being was that we decided, you know what, let's go try this place out. We've heard about this place too. And we ended up going, oh man, just the nice tenderness of the meat with the egg, the cactus that was in it. It's like a nice refreshing taste after having that really heavy, heavy meat. And I tell you guys, delicious doesn't even begin to explain that. I'm just, I just sat there. I'm just like, Mwah! beauty. So we got the um, the migas originales. It's a uh, egg, tortilla chips, avocado, cheese, so tomato. Oh, look at that. Boom, look at that. Great. That's right. All right. Put a little bit of sauce on it. Let's give it a nice bite. Boom. Is this one gonna make your nose bleed? I think it's gonna send me a little bit to heaven. That's so good. <laughs> nice, creamy, crunchy. Mm. Sounds, like, it. sounds like good sex. I say it's better than sex. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what ended up happening after we went to Veracruz is that I was just sitting in the back of the car, minding my own business. And my uncle is just like, hey man, you got that shaggy hair, bro. Like, come on, look at you, you look like you're homeless. And I'm just like, excuse me, man, wait, what? So um, we ended up going into downtown right next to cap the Capitol. And we're just like, what the hell? All right, we got this nice like, haircut place going. Went inside, oh, God forbid, these ladies, they were so nice and so accommodating to me, just bullshitted the whole time about, hey, this guy's from California, you know, he's over here having our barbecue and stuff like that. I uh, just started talking about the most random things. I ended up getting a haircut that was actually almost exactly like this. A nice fade, you know, two on the sides, a nice thing on top. The car. Yeah, good, and man. she got the, uh, <laughs> what was she got the hab, hab, haber? Okay, so one of the cool things I really wanted to tell you guys about, about is this block in Austin that it's just nothing but comic books, anime figures, toys, and all this stuff. It's just in the actual downtown portion of Austin, there's just this, a little block, like probably like 100 feet by 100 feet where it's just nothing but shops dedicated to the nerd trend, you know how it always is. Um, but the one I wanted to emphasize a lot on is Austin Books and Comics. So, we always go to Comic-Con. This is Barbecue Con, but we can always get a little bit of Comic-Con in our lives here, right here in Austin, Texas, baby. Outlaw Moon, Goozer Gallery, Austin Books Comics, really dope place, always should check it out, hella good guys um this place is really cool had a bunch of like not just comics and figures but they actually had art pieces that people have done my favorite actually had to be a, a daft punk samurai edition which was like a foil metal and all that cool stuff found some gems from like final fantasy i think eight which is odin which is like a 19 or 2000 like two figure that was like there really cool um just walking in there just seeing all the toys and the comics that were just there he just we were just like wow man look at that look at that oh that's cool um it's just really cool just to see how much you can just go anywhere and there's somewhere to cater to you know the nerd trend i don't really particularly have the most accessible areas where i can go look for like nerdy stuff but it was really cool to go there and just be like oh hey this hole in the wall place over here damn that's just all nothing but comics going around the corner comic shop toy shop comic shop comic shop and you're just like what? So I thought that was pretty cool, cool guys. So I hope you guys check it out. Austin Books and Comics. So now we're getting to the nitty gritty of it, which is second day of Austin. <laughs> Disappointed from the first day of the barbecue experience, made up with the tacos and the, also the comic book shop, right? So second day, we ended up going out to a place called Louis Mueller Barbecue out in Taylor, Texas. So Louis Mueller was the actual, like people call him the godfather of barbecue around the Austin area. The guy that taught a lot, the guy who owns Law Barbecue, the, taught the guy that owns Franklin's, which I'll get to in a little bit. 
Um, but going into that place and just seeing the actual charred wood on the walls, the smell, the smoke just tingling against your nose. You just knew it was going to be a great time. And also there wasn't really that much of a line. So you're just like, what? No, this actually, no, this can't be. And yeah, well, actually, guys, check it out for yourself, which bada bing bada boom, here it is. Where we at? We're at Mueller's, baby. The one, the only. The startup. Anyone in Austin, they had to go through this guy to get where they're at. We're going to do some beef ribs. We didn't get any beef ribs yesterday. Hopefully, today's the day. Let's kill it, baby. Let's get it. You will see just how big the damn ribs here. I'm like, okay, I'll get a beef rib, right? Uh, everyone just get a beef rib and some brisket. Everything's gonna be cool. I kid you not, guys, this thing is the entire size of my forearm. I'm not kidding you. Like, I'm like, damn, you think I can eat all that? And I'm just like, ah, oh, no, nah, man. I ended up having to half it with my uncle just because the thing was so damn huge. Let's talk about the brisket, though. I cannot tell you how deliciously decadent and melt in your mouth that brisket had like you just take a bite and it just butter gone immediately and you're just looking around you're just like no way this can't be this can't be right <laughs> um but no just the ambiance of the place is really cool too because like they had a game going on the side room like i said you just have the entire wall just cascaded in the smoked wood, basically just from the smokers that were back there. And they're just smoking right behind the register. It's not like there's a whole um, back half of the building that's dedicated to it. It's just right there in your face. So walking through the line, they have like a thing, like a bunch of ice chests and you can get some lemonade too. And just walk up to like, boom, I want this. Give me a pound of that. Give me some slaw. Give me some sausage. Give me a beef rib. Let's call it good. Sat down took a bite and I'm just like Ugh. okay so Miller barbecue we got some good old beef ribs look at this fell right off the bone as soon as I touched the day we got brisket we got hash green chili sausage some pickles bread of course potato salad let's try this brisket now that's the taste of Texas I want no, there's no overshadowing this, no spices, just the nice, beautiful, juicy meat that you want when you come to Texas from Mark. Louis Mueller, killing it. Yeah, I ordered too much. I ordered too much. <laughs> Eddie so fucking killed his shit and he ordered, he ordered as much as he did. More? More. And, uh, we're gonna take this home and it's a big day. It's just gonna be for all day. Oh shit. That's a Mueller beef rib. Humongous. It's a dinosaur leg, bro. Dinosaur something. What is better than pepper brisket at La Barbecue? <laughs> we'll say definitely that Myers Barbecue in Elgin is definitely up there for sure. Um, just sat down, the meat was just juicy, just pretty melty. I was already full from going to Louis Mueller and like not even an hour beforehand. But come on, you don't go to the Austin area just to not have barbecue, right? So just taking a bite into the brisket and just like, of course, just that melt, just that rendered fat just seeping onto your taste buds, man. It is like an out of world experience where like your soul leaves your body so you take a bite of that meat just because it's so damn good. <laughs> The one, the only, the GOAT, the one you go to Austin, Texas for, Franklin Barbecue, guys. So on a nice, crisp January morning, you know, you go walk out at 7 in the morning, put your chair down. There's already about 100 people in front of you. You're like, damn, I didn't expect you know, so many people to be out here already. Um, you just sit down, have a nice cup of coffee. Thank gosh for the trailer that's right next to it that they just serve coffee and other drinks out of just so you can sit and wait. 
Um, Franklin Barbecue. These guys are the go-to when you think of Austin Barbecue. Not only that it's just the name, it's also the reputation for the meat they have. And I will get to that in just a few seconds, actually, guys. All right, welcome to scenic downtown Texas, Austin, Texas, actually. Um, so welcome to the one and the only Franklin Barbecue. New building, building burned down about a couple years ago. You know, as you can see from around me, all the people already here. We got about two hours until open time. That's, so this is regards to some of the best uh, barbecue over here in the country. Uh, but we'll see exactly. You no know, brisket's always a hot item over here. Always probably gonna get probably get a pound of that. Easy money right there. Uh, last full barbecue day. Gotta get it. Have fun. Chill with uncles, having some brewskis at nine in the morning. What else could you ask for? Barbecue time. Can I get a sausage roll, please? It's gonna be good, baby. So we're here at the great Franklin barbecue guys. Look at all this meat right here. Look at all this delicious. It's got some bread, some sausage, pork ribs, brisket, potato salad, some tart, but we all know what we're here for. And look, look at that. I can't even pick this damn thing up without it ripping. Look at this beautiful moist, peppered. Look at that smoke ring right there guys. Look at that juice. I did not even take a bite. I did not chew. I put it in my mouth and it's in my stomach immediately. Guys, this is the best brisket in Austin, Texas, and possibly even the entire United States. It's so moist, tender, and amazing. Look at that. This liquid heaven, guys. Mm. The brisket to absolutely die for. Like, I cannot tell you how much I love that brisket just because the flavor explodes as you just take the gentlest of the gentle bites. The fat is immediately gone and emulsified in your mouth and butter doesn't even begin to explain it. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get some of the ribs. Uh, they ran out before we even made it up to the front, which is all right. You got to show up early if you want to get, you know, early bird gets the worm. That's what the saying goes. But also the potato salad was really wonderful there. I really liked the bread. God bless everyone in Texas for giving you so much bread with every damn meat order you take. Um, sausage was really good. Had a nice, like, spicy sausage with a jalapeno in it. So you take a bite and you just get that warm sensation through it. And guys, go to Austin, Texas. Get Franklin Barbecue. Because if you don't, I will be upset. Like, come on, man. I'm having, like, PTSD. I want to go back. Can we go back? <laughs> Franklin Barbecue. Barbecue is so good. Make you want to slap your mama. So one of the actual most badass comic places I've actually had to been to is this little place called Hobson Heroes. So a little bit of little thing is that, so the owners, Shannon and Matt, you guys are awesome. Shout out to you first off for just making it such an accommodating and amazing experience. Just the overall fun of being in that place was just one thing that was like a lifetime experience in my eyes just because this is the place that you can actually go buy a comic book and get a beer at the same time for free for free 
and it's all for charity as well so these guys give like they sell really nice comics and they also give a good contribution of their earnings towards local charities like scholarships for high school students scholarships for people in like tech clubs and whatnot and it's really cool just to get to learn and also they are actually friends with donny cates the marvel writer himself it was really cool because they actually had a homage of the bar that he had um written about and shown in some of his work which you guys check that out for sure and just going into um hops and heroes just seeing all this com the comics are just e like beautifully organized there's so much insight these guys had just goes to show you that there is a lot of love for comics and anything that is geek culture in austin so guys Shannon and Matt at Hops and Heroes. Check those guys out. Get yourself a comic, get yourself a beer, and have a really lit time. All right, guys, so that concludes our special edition episode of Barbecue Con. So where are we going to go from here? Hmm, you never know. We might end up in Nashville. We might end up in Memphis. You never just know. Next Barbecue Con that's happening is going to happen. You just got to wait and see. All right, guys, well, I'm Eddie from Team Nerd Herd. You can contact me via twitch.tv slash Haru underscore Tachibana or on Twitter, Haru Tachibana 5. And guys, from Team Nerd Herd to you, if you want to do it right, collect what you like. Peace out, baby.